the business runs in my family. Both my maternal and paternal grandfathers had been chemists in Britain. My grandfather came to America and promptly hung out a shingle as an apothecary in New England. My dad took a slightly different path, becoming a traveling medicine man. He'd roll into town and dispense whatever sort of elixir, extract, or nostrum remedium he could convince the locals they needed. He'd been working through Kansas when a twister th tore through Dodge an hour after he'd arrived. One moment he was trading brown glass bottles for nickels, and the next the sky had turned black and half a pond came raining down on him. Instead of drowning, he came up sputtering with a Nixie in his arms. They took it as a sign, found a blind judge to marry them that evening. I was born a year later, and by then he had an appointment as the royal apothecary to the Seely Court. That set the stage for me. Dad taught me all he could, and at 16, I crossed back for college and grad school. After I'd earned my doctorate, the Queen of Fairy herself encouraged me to stay on this side of the border, filling a much neglected niche. With a background of enchanted panaceas and mythical relatives, I opened a drugstore in a sleepy college town and made a point of serving not only the local clientele, but also every supernatural creature within a hard day's travel. As the years passed, the world changed, becoming stranger in the mainstream than anything even the unseelie court could offer. But if I learned anything from my parents, it was never to judge. People were people, whether they were mortal or fey, brownie or bogart, straight or gay, shifter or shadow dweller. When you're compounding and dispensing in a college town, though the students may come and go, the locals, particularly the faculty, become close friends. Donnie was one of the first, a tenured professor of anthropology. As his pharmacist and friend for 30 years, I knew he was a bear in both the gay and lycanthropic sense of the word. Friends look out for friends, so when I realized one of my other customers, a handsome physics grad student, let's call him Theo, was also a gay werebear, I played matchmaker. Theo was green, but when you're 26, that's to be expected. He'd only recently come out of both the closet and the zoo, and like a lot of gay wares, he had daddy issues. Donnie had issues too, being twice the kid's age, but I'm a good judge of character, something I get from my mother. Theo picked up a much needed role model and mentor, and Donnie discovered how fresh and new the world becomes when you have a young love. Now, before you start in on me about helping a friend rob the cradle, understand that most days of the month, Theo was Donnie's protege, not his fuck buddy. See, Donnie's got a congenital heart defect that even lycanthropy can't fix. And while the spirit may be willing, his mortal flesh won't handle the rigors of sex. It was only my poultice of mandrake and yohimbe that kept his human body alive that, that long. But when the full moon rolled around, Donnie and Theo would go off camping, and let me tell you that bears do more than just shit in the woods. In ursine form, Donnie's heart was indestructible, barring the intervention of a hunter with silver rifle shells. So really, what could go wrong? If there's one thing you learn as the offspring of mortal and immortal parents, it's never to tempt fate with questions like that. One morning after a full moon, a Sunday where I would normally have slept in, I woke to Theo ringing the bell to my tiny apartment up above the pharmacy. I stuck my head out the window, bleary-eyed and ready to tell some damn kid to get off my porch. When Theo saw me, he mouthed the words, emergency, and alley, and ran off. I put on my robe and slippers and went down the stairs to open the back door. He wasn't alone. Standing alongside him was a massive black bear with an erection as big as my arm. I'd seen Donnie's bear form before, but never in a state of sexual arousal, and certainly never in daylight. The first rule of shifters is it's a nocturnal way of life and all about the moon. He didn't change back at dawn, said Theo, his eyes wide and his voice trembling with every word. I is he going to be all right? I reached for Donnie's muzzle, but he pulled back, refusing to let me touch him. More, he wouldn't even meet my gaze. 
that was all I needed for a diagnosis. He'll be fine, Theo, you can stop worrying. Lycanthropic priapism reverses itself eventually. Damn it, Donny, you know not to mess with mortal meds. I'm your friend and your pharmacist. You shouldn't be going to anybody else. Now tell me, who filled your Viagra prescription? <laughs>